I was happy, happy, so happy to have everybody here tonight. Amen. amen. All of our guests. Amen. I, I was starting to get a little bit scared because we got two shifts. We got the early shift, and then we got about the 15 or 20-minute shift of regular folks to come in. And in between those, we had more visitors than we had home folks. Amen. That's kind of exciting to me. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Amen. It doesn't matter why you came. We're just going to worship the Lord. Amen. Amen. We're just going to worship the Lord in spirit and in truth. We will be baptizing. Uh, Connie and LaDonna after church, amen, or after we get through preaching and let the Holy Ghost move a little bit, amen, Amen. but we're excited about that, amen, Amen. super excited about that, excited about what all the Lord's doing, amen, happy to see all of our guests, a lot of first-time visitors are here, amen, and we're so happy to have you. Matthew chapter number 11, be reading one verse of scripture tonight, amen, and uh, I... uh, Praise the Lord. I, I uh, feel like um, a little bit in my spirit, I feel like that how many of you know sometimes the battle gets tough? Sometimes we can't do much but just lean back and rest on him. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I feel the spirit of encouragement coming up on somebody in here tonight. Amen. God's for me. Turn to your neighbor and say, God's for you. God's for you. He's not against you. He's for you. He died for me. He gave his life for me. He's not looking to squash me out. He's looking to let me live and live an abundant life. That's what he said he came for. Come on. That's what he said he came for, that you might have life and you might have it more abundantly. Praise the Lord. Amen. And from the days of John the Baptist until now, everybody say until now, the kingdom of heaven suffereth violence and the violent take it by force. Now I'm going to tell you that scripture There were many, many, many years that I read this and I had no idea what it meant. The kingdom of heaven suffereth violence and the violent take it by force. But there's a message in here tonight that's all about changing your focus. Amen? It's all about getting the focus in the right place. If you help me for a little bit tonight, I'm going to minister to you and I'm going to help somebody. By the help of the Holy Ghost, amen, because it's not by might nor by power, but by his spirit, saith the Lord. Let's pray together right now. Dear God in heaven, we appreciate you. Thank you, Lord, for everyone that came out tonight. Thank you for the spirit that we feel here. Thank you for the good praise and worship that went up. Thank you for the liberty that we feel. Thank you for the hope that we have in you, Lord, that somebody's life can be changed forever. Forever, somebody's life can be changed tonight. They'll have an encounter with you. They'll meet you, Lord, and their life be irrevocably changed. I'm believing that and speaking it by faith in the name of Jesus. Amen. You may be seated. Hallelujah. John the Baptist, we read a lot about him, a lot is said about him, but the truth of the matter is he's in a very small portion of the Bible. Not a great lot of years did he live. He, he burst on the scene looking like a wild man and preaching a message of repentance and a message of hope. He's clothed in camel's hair, unshaven, long hair, possibly unwashed. He came roaring out of the wilderness eating locust and wild honey in the spirit of Elijah, the Bible said. From his earliest ministry, Brother Rice, uh, he propagated the soon coming of Jesus Christ uh, in which would come the baptism of the Holy Ghost uh, and fire. I said he preached that there would come one mightier than him who's coming along after that would baptize him with the Holy Ghost and with fire. I'm glad to tell you that when the Holy Ghost got on me and got in me, it came accompanied by some fire. It came accompanied by something that causes me not to be able to sit still, not to be able to hold my peace, but I got to worship him, I got to praise him, and bless God, I got to tell folks about him. It's the fire of the Holy Ghost. The fire of the Holy Ghost. He was, by his own admission, 
He said, I am not the Christ, but I am the voice of one crying in the wilderness, saying, prepare ye the way of the Lord. The text, and I hope it's still up there, the text that I read to you tonight uses some words in a way that may be unfamiliar to us. The kingdom of heaven refers to the rule or the reign of Jesus Christ and it refers to the people that make up his kingdom. Jesus said in John 18 and 36, Jesus answered, my kingdom is not of this world. My kingdom is not of this world. If my kingdom were of this world, then would my servants fight. Then would my servants fight for me that I should not be delivered to the Jews, but now is my kingdom not from hence or not from here on earth. The kingdom that we're striving to enter, saints of God, is a kingdom not of this world. We believe that there is a place. We believe that there is a place that he has prepared for them that love him and that keep his commandments and walk after his precepts and follow after the word of God. I got to tell you, I believe there's a heaven waiting for me someday. I believe the trumpet's going to sound and the church is going to be called up to meet the dead in Christ. If I ever lose my vision of heaven, I won't be here anymore. The old song said, the reason I'm in this church is I don't want to be lost. I want to make heaven my home. I believe there's a better place. Paul said, if I have hope in this life only, I'd be of all men most miserable. Brother Pete, we have hope. We got hope in this life, but bless God, we have a hope beyond this life. The word suffereth in our text. The word suffereth from days of John the Baptist until now. The word suffereth would be better rendered to allow or even to encourage. So that would say, from the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven encourageth violence. Well, that don't even make sense. Huh? Thinking about Jesus, it doesn't make sense. The word violence is actually the same Greek word as press or force. The disciples... The disciples in the time of Jesus Christ and in the days following his ascension and the outpouring of the Holy Ghost, the disciples suffered great opposition. They attempted to kill Jesus himself several times. One time sticks out in my mind when he said, Before Abraham was, I am. They attempted to stone him. After he brought Lazarus forth from the grave, they conspired to kill him. Several times before he was finally crucified, they tried to kill Jesus. And each of the disciples, every one, 11 of the 12 disciples, with the exception of John the Revelator, all died a martyr's death for the cause of Jesus Christ. Brother Rice, they fought the battle until the very end. They gave their life for the great and glorious gospel of the death, the burial, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. If you study your history, if they would have just denied it, Brother David, they could have lived. But they gave their life for the gospel. Our focus... Can I tell you tonight that our focus cannot be on earthly things, nor can it be on battles with flesh and blood. Our focus cannot be on things of earth. If we get focused on things of earth, we are distracted from the cause. We are distracted from what's important if we're focused on earthly things. Actually, our best defense, our best defense is to go on the offense by violently pressing our way in and possessing the gospel of the kingdom and the promises of God to press our way from the kingdom of this world to push off the shackles and the clutches of this world, the things that appeal to the flesh, and to press our way, to press, to push, to fight, to become violent in pursuing the kingdom of God. I said it before, I'll say it again. We're not fighting an earthly battle, but a heavenly battle. We won't win a prize on this earth, but in the earth to come. Jesus was aware that his disciples would fight for him. If the goal or if the earth that they saw or the things that were around them or or acceptance among the, the religious leaders of the day was what the goal was, they would fight for him. Peter even tried to fight for him, but he healed the servant's ear. 
But the goal that Jesus was preparing them for and the goal that we have to be prepared for and the vision that we have to always have in front of us is to one day go to a land where we'll never grow old, where there's no tears, there's no sadness, there's no sorrow, there's no pain. The Bible said for the former things are passed away. I know this ain't deep, but if I could just paint a picture of heaven and get you to believe that he's prepared it for you, not for your neighbor, not for your friend, not for that good person, you know but he's prepared it for you man every time we have visitors I say I'm not going to act a fool and then there I go again we are We are to follow the example of Jesus Christ with regard to our dealings with the opposition that we meet in the flesh. When we meet opposition and when folks come against us and when we have trials and and cares and heartaches that assault us in the flesh, we are to meet them with the same dignity and with the same class and with the same faith that Jesus did. It is not his will that we respond in kind when we are buffeted, whether it be for our faults or for doing his good work. We are, however, as the Apostle Paul so eloquently and adeptly put it, we are to put our energies where they are best served. Philippians chapter 3, verse number 10 through verse number 14 says, the first verse says, that I may know him that I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings being made conformable unto his death if by any means, brother Pete, if by any means, if by any means that I might attain to the resurrection of the dead. I've said this before and I'll probably say it again. I'm going to preach to you. I'm going to try to help you. I'm going to encourage you and I'm going to counsel you. But when the trumpet sounds, it's every man for himself because I'm packed up, loaded up, and ready to go. I want to take you with me. I want to encourage you. I want to tell you how to do it. But I'm not staying here for nobody. If by any means... I might attain to the resurrection of the dead. But not as though I had already attained. Either were already perfect. That word means complete. But I follow after. But I follow after. But I follow after. I ain't trying to get even with nobody. I ain't trying to get back at nobody. I'm not even trying to prove nobody wrong. I'm just trying to make it to heaven. I'm not trying to win no battles down here. Because if I beat you up and give you a black eye, then what? I'm not trying to defeat you. I'm not trying to push you down. I'm trying to help you. But I follow after. If that, now th- listen to me, if that I, everybody say I, I. you don't have to say this part because I'm going to talk a little, that I may apprehend that for which also I am apprehended of Christ Jesus. In short, Paul is saying, uh, I'm trying my best to, to get my hands to my mind and my life wrapped around what has got a hold of me. I'm trying my best. Hear hear me right now. If you're focused uh, on getting back at somebody in the world, uh, if you're focused uh, on justifying yourself or being vindicated, uh, you better get your focus off on something else. Uh, Put your energy on praising the Lord. If you're mad at them, uh, you show up to the house of God and you clap your hands uh, as hard as you can. You lift your hands uh, as high as you can because the devil put them in your path to destroy you. And the way to let the devil know he lost is is to lift up the name of Jesus. Amen. 
Brother McKinney, I've got to get my focus on apprehending that which has got a hold of me. Oh, I came to a meeting one night. I heard about it. They preached about it. The Sunday school teacher taught about it. But when it got on me and got in me and got around me, and now that I'm not a baby no more, I'm trying my best to pursue and grab a hold. Grab a hold of what he has for me. And if the devil can get me distracted, brethren, I count myself not to have apprehended. But this one thing I do forgetting, everybody say forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth unto those things which are before. There's only one way. There's only one way for you to see what's ahead of you. Oh, you can pay your money all you want to to the psychic hotline. They ain't doing nothing but taking your money away from you. There's only one way that you can see what is ahead of you, and that's consult the one that knows the end from the beginning. He said, I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning, the ending, which is, which was, and which is to come, the Almighty. That's why the Bible said, where there's no vision, the people perish. I've got to get the vision the Lord has for me. Remember, I said the kingdom of heaven suffereth violence, and the violent... Take it by force. Reaching forth unto those things which are before, I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. The kingdom of heaven allows or encourages violence, and the violent take it by force. I say to you tonight, take it. Possess it. Maintain it. Hear me right now. We must approach this calling God's placed on our life, this salvation that is given freely to whosoever will, Brother Billy, with fire in our belly. We've got to approach it with a violent spirit, with a forceful spirit. That the old song said, this joy that I have, the world didn't give it to me, and the world can't take it away. The only way the world or the devil can take your joy is if you give it to them. But I come to tell you that I'm grabbing my arms around it. I'm wrapping my hands around it. I've got it down inside of me. And if you want to fight, honey, you come after what the Lord gave me. And I'm going to be violent. I'm going to be forceful. I'm going to worship hard. I'm, yes, I'm going to holler. And yes, I'm going to yell. I yell when the cardinals are doing good. I yell when I feel like I'm happy. If you give me a $100 bill, I'm going to yell. I've got to get excited because the kingdom of heaven says I can be violent. Brother Billy, I've got to get violent. I've got to get forceful. I got to press, I got to push. The energy that I use to exist in this world has got to be focused on making it to the next one. We must, as I said a while ago, get a fire down inside of us. And we've got to pray, we've got to fast, we've got to worship, and we've got to sing with a fervor. I said with a fervor that is indicative of where we're headed and the power of our purpose. James 5 and 16 says, uh, the effectual. The effectual, fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. I don't care how you dress that up. I don't care how you try to explain it away or, or match it up. or I don't care how you try to justify it. There's nowhere in the Bible that talks about us praying. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. I love you, Jesus. When you want something from God, you better get after it the same way your kids get after a new toy or a candy bar or a new car. That's where I am now. Or want to drive? We've got to get after what God has for us uh, with force uh, and with violence. Uh, we've got to get something down inside of us that won't stop until we get where we know where we need to be. 
The kingdom of heaven allows violence, Brother McKinney. No, not beating up on nobody, not body slamming somebody, punching their lights out. But we got to get violent in the spirit. We got to get violent in our worship. We got to get violent in our pursuit of a relationship with God. As I was writing my notes out today, I began to feel the spirit of Job as all hell came against him. Literally. The devil and his angels turned loose upon Job and his life. But in 1 and 21 of Job, Job said, Naked came I out of my mother's womb, and naked shall I return thither. The Lord gave, and the Lord hath taken away. Here's where the violence comes in at. The, I've said this before too, but I like it. I'll say it again. The devil don't know what to do with somebody that takes his best shot. The devil don't know what to do with somebody that's body is racked by pain, that cancer has taken away all of their, their faculties, that their mind may not even be sharp. But when they get the opportunity, they stand up and say, Blessed be the name of the Lord. That, my friends, is the violence that I'm preaching about. That's about being violent, Brother Pete. If I only have one ounce of energy left in this body, I don't want it to be about making money. I don't want it to be about proving myself right. But, Brother Billy, if I've only got one ounce of energy left, I want it to be on praising the Lord who gave me life, who gave me hope, and whose I am. The Lord gave me everything I've got. And if you steal it from me, he can give me some more. But I'm going to bless his name. 1 Peter chapter 1, verse number 3 through verse number 9 said, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, which according to his abundant mercy hath begotten us again unto a lively hope. We've been born again. Unto a lively hope by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. Everything you and I have uh, spiritually is because Jesus got out of the tomb. Amen. To a lively hope by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. To an inheritance incorruptible and undefiled and that fadeth not away. Reserved in heaven for you. To an inheritance, incorruptible and undefiled, that fadeth not away, reserved in heaven for you. Next verse. For you who are kept by the power of God. To you who are kept. By the power of God. I told somebody this morning, I stand beside it. The way this stuff works in the spiritual world, that there are many times you wake up one morning and just find yourself on the mountain. Looking back, and you don't even know how you made it. You don't know how you persevered. You don't know how you held on. You don't know how you went through that battle. Because while you were going through it, it felt like it was going to kill you. It felt like it was going to destroy you. But you wake up as the sun rises in the morning and you find yourself standing on the mountain. Looking back down the road and you don't even care how you got there. You just know that you've been kept by the power of God. I didn't make it by myself. I didn't make it on my own want to. But I've been kept by the power of God. If we'll realize this, uh, and if we'll get this deep down inside of us, uh, there's not enough devils in hell to take away your joy in the Holy Ghost. I'm not kept by me. I can't read the Bible enough to be kept. I can't pray enough to be kept. I've got to be kept by the power of God. Through faith unto salvation ready to be revealed in the last time. Hear me right now. Wherein those trials, tribulations, and heartaches, listen, wherein you greatly rejoice. Yeah. 
you greatly rejoice. Wherein you greatly rejoice in the hope, in the promises, in the abilities that we have through Christ Jesus. That's where we rejoice. Though now, for a season, if need be, ye are in heaviness through manifold temptations or tests. That's not talking about sin. That's talking about trials you're going through. Even though right now you may be going through a trial. You may be going through manifold tests. That the trial of your faith. Next verse. Being much more precious than of gold that perisheth. Though it be tried with fire. Might be found unto praise and honor and glory at the appearing of Jesus Christ. Whom having not seen, you love. In whom though now you see him not, yet believing. You know what? We've been called holy rollers for a lot of years. And I ain't ashamed of it. We earned it. But if we would get where our praise, where our praise is equal to what God's done for us, Brother Billy. You ain't seen violence yet, honey. You ain't seen violence yet. If my praise is any indicator of what he's done for me. Oh, come on. He didn't give me, he ain't give me some patty cake blessings. He ain't give me some glory, hallelujah, praise God, amen blessings. Oh, he's blessed me. He's delivered me. He has healed me. He's blessed my mind. He's blessed my family. I've been healed instantly. I've been delivered instantly. I've had the Lord bless me in the darkest moment of my life. <laughs> when I think of his goodness I'm not talking about a song brother Terry I'm talking about really think about his goodness when I think of his goodness and all he's done for me Violence sound like a good word. I want to praise him violently. I want to create a storm so big that the devil gets blind that he can't even see me no more because my praise is so vociferous and my praise is so demonstrative. You say, I don't think there's any need in that. Well, you just keep on thinking what you're thinking. You don't know like I know what he's done for me. You wasn't there when he picked me up. You wasn't there when he delivered me. I'm going to lift up my hands. I'm going to lift up my voice. Sometimes I'm going to jump because I owe everything to him I owe everything to him and I'm just practicing for when I get to heaven I'm just practicing for when I kneel at his feet cause you ain't seen nothing yet honey I'm gonna be rude I'm gonna be pushy I'm gonna wade through till I fall down at the feet of Jesus you rejoice with joy unspeakable the reason why I go nuts in the Holy Ghost is I can't get the words out. Words can't describe what he means to me. So rather than just sit here and blow up. I just let it out. And the Bible tells me that the kingdom of heaven will allow me to do that. The kingdom of heaven will allow me to do that. The old hymn says, I'm, I'm, I'm hurrying to a close. My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. On Christ the solid rock I stand. All other ground 
is sinking sand. 2 Timothy 2 and 19 says, Nevertheless, the foundation of God standeth sure. Having this seal, The Lord He described me as a chosen generation. A royal priesthood. A peculiar people. A holy nation. That you should show forth the praises of him who has called you out of darkness <laughs> into this marvelous light. Musicians come, if you would. Hebrews twelve twenty seven through twenty nine says and this word. Yet once more signifieth the removing of those things that are shaken as of things that are made. That those things which cannot be shaken may remain. You know who gets to decide if your commitment can be shaken or not? You do. And a while ago, I was playing with Leela, and I stole her foo-foo. How often have you tried to grab something from a baby? And if they don't want you to have it, they will claw, they will bite, they will scratch, they will pull, they will scream. In short, they will be violent. I'm the one that decides whether my commitment to God can be shaken or not. And you know something, Brother Pete, when it comes, I'm going to be polite. And I'm going to be nice. If, if, if you want to try to come up in my yard, I had that happen. We live in a dead-end street, and them kids drive their toys and cut off through my yard. And Brother, Brother Rice, I'm going to be polite. Please don't tear up my yard. Well, I wasted my breath, but I, I was nice anyway. Please don't tear up my yard. You go to a restaurant, and you order your steak a certain way, and it's, it's not done right. You, would, would you please take this back and... And cook it or fix it. But thank you very much and please and appreciate you and all of that. When you walk through Walmart on Fabulous Friday, <laughs> do you see how they made fun of me on Facebook about that? <laughs> and everybody's clawing and scratching and fighting. And you'll say, excuse me, pardon me, excuse me. But when the devil or hell or one of his demons or the cares of life start coming after your Holy Ghost, they start coming after your commitment. When they start attacking what's going on between you and the Lord and trying to take your dream away, there ain't no politeness. There ain't no friendliness. It's dog eat dog. And you better pack a lunch, honey. Because if you're coming after what I've got with the Lord, oh, you better bring your brother with you. And you better tell him to get a couple of friends. Because I've made a decision. I've made up my mind that I'm going through. I'm going all the way. 
and the kingdom of heaven from the time of John the Baptist uh, till he burst forth on the scene uh, introducing this Jesus of Nazareth that nobody had ever heard of. Come on, stay with me just a minute. He said, he's coming after me and he's mightier than I. He's going to baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. And when they got a hold of that, when they got a hold of it, they took it all the way to the grave with them. They wouldn't give it up even if it meant their life. And I've decided. Let's stand. That when it comes to my walk with God, the Bible said, do unto others as you would have them do unto you unless they're trying to steal your joy. I added that in there. But the Bible said the kingdom of heaven will allow you to be violent. And the violent take it by force. I want to tell somebody tonight, you're not destined to fail, but you're destined to win. I said earlier, you told your neighbor God's for you. The Bible said if God be for us, uh, who can stand against us? Who can be against us? Nobody can stand against you. There's something that's got to get down inside of you and you don't get it by shaking a preacher's hand or having a good confession. You get it by the power of God Almighty taking up residence inside of you and filling you with His Spirit. I believe I'll testify God's been good to me. God's been good to me. Victory. The enemy has tried his best, best to make me turn around, turn around. Oh, but, but my, my God's, God's never failed, failed me. me. So I'm going to stand my ground. No matter what comes, no matter what comes my, my way, way I lift my, my voice and say, Hallelujah! Anyhow, wait a minute, one more time. I think I'll say it again. God's been good. God's been so good to me, and He's my closest friend. Come on, somebody! Come on, somebody! Step out of your pew and now. demonstrate. Declare what I'm the Lord means to you. Come on, come on, no come on, come on. Declare it. I declare it with my say. praise. Hallelujah, anyhow. Hallelujah, 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 anyhow. No matter what comes my way, I'll lift my voice and say, hallelujah. God's been good to me Through every test and trial I've got the victory The enemy has tried his best To make me turn around Bring me down